good afternoon everyone i am delighted to uh, have you all on this release and launch of uh, nagrikul's fourth report in this series of climate change where we are trying to contextualize climate change from the lenses of small and mid sized cities in india now we already have released uh, reports on rise in temperature rise in sea level and also on uh, urban wetlands along with the overview of uh, the impact of climate change on smaller cities uh, i'm delighted to have you all along with a esteemed set of panelists uh, from different parts of the country representing different domain expertise uh, in in the realm of air pollution and air quality so we have uh, ravi choudhry from prayas youth foundation aurangabad ajay mittal who has been a uh, past convener of west bengal clean air network from kolkata dr pradeep rajiv uh, an assistant professor in department of civil environmental engineering at iit patna as well as shivani modi who is head of marketing at ubreed which is a company uh, that has come up with a pioneering uh, tech solution for purifying air using natural plants so with that uh, i would hand it over to arundhati who will start with a presentation about uh, the publication that we'll release later in the uh, in the in the webinar uh, to outline what all it contains so over to you arundhati just as we began to unwind from our diwali breaks the seasonal shift in the air brings with it the dreaded smog that shocks our cities and citizens and with this we see delhi's poor air quality dominating headlines everywhere however not many know that in october bornihat a small town in meghalaya had already recorded pollution levels surpassing those of delhi due to industrial emissions and heavy interstate traffic these smaller cities are often overlooked in the broader discourse on climate change policy and action and suffer from a limited amount of research and knowledge production along with gaps in climate data monitoring and availability with this series we intend to shift the focus on the challenges faced by small and mid sized cities secondly to enhance citizens understanding regarding the role that such cities play in climate change and finally to identify the knowledge gaps to enhance city specific responses this series is divided into four parts as mentioned before the first two parts were released in may this year while the third part was launched in august part 1 contextualizes the relationship between cities and climate change while the other parts dive deep into some of the major impacts of climate change and spotlights the smaller cities that are undergoing such challenges while part 1 had been introduced in the prior web launches it is important to briefly go through it as it serves as an explainer for the consequent sections it focuses on the type of climate change impact smaller cities face as well as the dual dual roles cities play in this scenario cities are identified as one of the key systems that generate almost 90% of greenhouse house gas emissions and hence act as contributors of climate change as sufferers cities face varied impacts that put the residents at risk according to reports 80% of 998 cities globally are experiencing at least one of the climate disasters in the top 20 polluted cities of the world 15 are small and mid sized cities from india and these cities have annual pm 2.5 levels that exceed the who guideline by over 10 times moving on to our indian cities our country is home to 43 of the 100 most climate crisis vulnerable cities of the world moreover 13 out of the top 20 risk locations in the world which includes small and mid sized indian cities similarly when it comes to the role of indian cities in climate change as contributors they emit 44% of the country's total carbon emissions meanwhile over 75% of the country's districts are likely to be hot spots for extreme weather events making cities major sufferers during heat waves and cyclones 
This indicates the increasing vulnerability of Indian cities in the face of climate change. As now we have set the context, we will be moving ahead with discussing the newer part of this series. Part four focuses on another one of the major climate change impacts, the plight of India's smaller cities grappling with declining air quality. This report begins by looking at the cyclical link between declining um, air quality and climate change, and also examines the severe health risks posed by air pollution, highlighting how many smaller cities exceed PM 2.5 guidelines. It further highlights the significant gaps in air quality monitoring and data in these cities. The report concludes by emphasizing the urgent need for local and civic actions to improve air quality and protect public health. This part also includes a case study on Bhivari, serving as an example of the severe air quality challenges faced by smaller cities. It highlights the lack of effective air quality monitoring and action despite the city's alarming pollution levels. Poor air quality and climate change are interconnected as they fuel each other in a harmful cycle. Pollutants like greenhouse gases trap heat, causing global warming. This not only raises the temperature, but also leads to ground level smog and pollution. Additionally, rising temperatures and the heat waves worsen particulate pollution by creating stagnant air that concentrates pollutants, further degrading air quality. Thus, climate change accelerates the decline in air quality, and this continues on in a toxic cyclical relationship. India ranks as the third most polluted country in the world, with 96% of its population exposed to PM 2.5 levels exceeding the WHO guidelines. 83 of the world's top 100 polluted places are in India, predominantly small and mid-sized cities. The annual PM 2.5 levels in these cities exceed the WHO guidelines by over 10 times. Bihar has the highest number of these polluted cities, followed by Haryana. When we talk about particulate matter, we specifically talk about PM 2.5, which are finer particles, and PM 10, which are coarser particles. Both of these harm the respiratory system. However, PM 2.5 poses a greater risk. These fine particles are more likely to travel into and deposit on the deeper parts of the lungs. They can even enter the bloodstream leading to cardiovascular and respiratory impacts in India. In India, PM 2.5 related deaths have increased 2.5 times in 20 years, making its levels crucial for assessing air quality. Air pollution causes 6.7 million premature deaths yearly, making air quality guidelines essential for public health. The WHO first set air quality standards in 1987, revising them in 2005 and again in 2021 to reflect rise, rising risk. Interestingly, many Indian cities even failed to meet the country's own relatively lenient particulate pollution standards. The CPCB measures air quality in cities using the air quality index, which is based on the levels of seven pollutants. However, it calculates AQI only if data for at least three pollutants is available one of which has to be particulate matter. Small and mid-sized cities account for nearly 70% of India's continuous air quality monitoring stations and 87 of manual stations. Despite a considerable network of monitoring stations, our research points out that continuous data on PM5 is available for only 30.7 of these smaller cities, showing gaps in real-time data collection. We have also found that 60% of air pollution research in 2022 focused on larger cities, with only 16% dedicated to small and mid-sized cities, reflecting a research gap in smaller urban areas. The NCAP had also targeted a 20 to 30% reduction in PM levels by this year in 132 non-attainment cities, meaning that cities that have failed to meet the air quality standards set by the CPCB. However, this report points out that some of the highly polluted cities like Bhivari remain excluded from this list, highlighting gaps in coverage. Meanwhile, the NCAP aims to tackle air pollution through city-specific action plans. 
Coordination and accountability among local bodies and state pollution control boards are essential for the effective implementation. Strategies like car-free days, e-mobility, and waste recycling to reduce emissions have been taken up, but such efforts have been quite limited in smaller cities. Nevertheless, cities like Devas, Sundarnagar, Nalagar have focused on waste segregation, road dust control, and public awareness efforts. To understand the impact of declining air quality in smaller cities, we looked at Bhivari as a case study. Situated on the Rajasthan-Haryana border, this industrial town has repeatedly been listed among world's most polluted cities. The city's air quality is significantly impacted by road dust, emissions, and a lack of green spaces. Over the recent years, large volumes of water have been sprayed over city roads to reduce dust pollution. But these measures are insufficient in addressing the broader air quality crisis. Despite its severe pollution levels and limited local efforts, Bhivari remains largely well, overlooked in national well, monitoring and action plans. While we highlight these knowledge gaps, the areas of further inquiry include the role of community, technology, and NGOs which we believe may be instrumental for tackling climate change related issues for smaller cities grappling with poor air quality. Thank you. Um, very comprehensive presentation. Thanks, Arundhati. Thank you. Um, now I will be formally introducing the esteemed panelists for the evening. Mr. Ravi Chaudhary is the founder and president of Prayas Youth Foundation. He was also the Vatavaran Mitra for Aurangabad in the Clean Air Fellowship Program. As the founder of Prayas Youth Foundation, he undertook afforestation by practicing various scientific and modern techniques like Miyawaki urban native forest, agroforestry, and multi-layer traditional plantation method to combat air pollution and enhance air quality. He is currently on a mission to plant 1 million trees by 2020. Ajay Mittal was the former director of climate change programs for India and South Asia at earthday.org, where he led several projects, including the Canopy Project, planting 2 million mangroves in Sundarbans. He also was the convener for Kolkata Clean Air, combating air pollution as a concern of climate crisis in Kolkata. He's a passion, passionate change maker focused on sustainability and was honored as a water hero by the Ministry of Jal Shakti, Government of India. Professor Pradhi Rajiv is an assistant professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at IIT Patna with expertise in atmospheric sciences and air pollution. Her research focuses on particulate matter, atmospheric chemistry and source apportionment with a particular emphasis on air pollution characteristics and exposure assessment. Doc, uh, Professor Rajiv's work has significantly contributed to understanding air quality issues and its health impact in urban and semi-urban areas. Her research has been widely recognized and published in high impact journals, including Atmospheric Environment, Science of the Total Environment and Environmental Pollution. Shivani Modi is the head of marketing at You Breathe, a company revolutionizing air quality with our breathing roots technology, boosting the air purification capabilities of plants by up to 500 times. With a background in social impact entrepreneurship, sustainability, and marketing, her passion lies in promoting ethical brands and nature-based products. She uses her expertise in content strategy and storytelling to help build social enterprises and social impact initiatives. We are very excited to have you with us, share your insights and perspectives today. Um, Tarun, over to you. Thanks a lot, Tarundati, for setting this context, uh, for laying out the contours of this comprehensive research. And I would, uh, while I was looking at some of the panelists, one of the things that I remember that I came across was uh, a report, uh, which was a learning report by the Vatavaran Mitra Fellowship. And we have Ravi, and I think in the audience, we also have Vinod, who is from Ulasnagar, who was a Vatavaran Mitra. And I think Ravi's reflection about his journey of being a clean air fellow 
uh, said something on the lines that when he started, uh, he felt that air pollution was like a sentence. Then it became a chapter and then it became a book and then eventually it became a library. And I think uh, this reflection ties in very uh, neatly with our own reflection while we've been working on this uh, report of climate change in smaller cities. Uh, because when we started, we, we we did not even know that where do we start uh, holding it. And after we've started putting it together, I think we've, we can probably make library of libraries just on this topic. And so little is under, uh, understood about uh, this very important subject matter, especially from the lens of smaller cities. Uh, so I am very excited uh, that we have a young global shaper from, from Kolkata who has worked across Bengal cities and now also working in two other states. Uh, nearby states. Uh, we have a seasoned clean air champion from Aurangabad in Ravi. Uh, we have a tech pioneer from Gurugram, uh, Shivani, who's been, uh, who have developed over the last few years uh, 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 a pioneering technology which uses plant waste filters and reduces dependence on HEPA filters. And then we have an accomplished researcher from Patna whose studies has been uh, instrumental in understanding the characteristics of this pollution in, in, our, in, our, in our cities. So I was just imagining that if all of these diverse skills were there in one city, uh, that city would have probably the cleanest air. <laughs> but uh, uh, we, we might not have them in all the cities, but we have them in this room. So we have probably the cleanest Zoom room of all times. And I don't think I'll have to use the phrase, I have to clean the air uh, in the next one hour or so. <laughs> uh, so with that, uh, uh, I would start with... Uh, formally asking the questions around uh, uh, the report because we, we uh, Arundhati already covered some of the major aspects of what we were trying to understand uh, when it comes to air pollution in smaller cities. And largely, I think uh, what we're trying to say is that what is air pollution? What is its impact? How do we assess it? And how can we, uh, uh, in a way, stop it uh, from impacting us? And uh, maybe, maybe what we can start with is trying to get an understanding of what air pollution means for smaller cities. I can start with Professor Pradhi as to uh, what are some of the common sources uh, in terms of the composition of air pollution in northern cities. Uh, you've been doing some research in Allahabad and Kanpur and uh, a lot of your work focuses on understanding what constitutes air pollution. And maybe if you could uh, briefly tell us about, uh, like as a small city citizens, what should we understand when we are trying to understand air pollution. Thank you, Tarun, first. But I want to thank Arundhati for a very uh, knowledgeable presentation. You have a, a very comprehensive putting up all the data all together at one place. So it's a very good thing. Uh, secondly, the statistics that you have shown is actually the present scenario that although the small cities and the mid size cities are being the focus of the air quality in India right now, but still the, you can say the control measures or the measures that has to be taken in these cities are not that effective as compared to the metropolitan cities or the uh, your capital cities of each state. So as Tarun asked first, so the sources, so the sources of air pollution, we all know that is because of the vehicular exhaust, the biomass burning. When biomass burning, I'm saying it's not just because of the agriculture waste burning. It is also because of the your wood burning, your organic municipal garbage burning, the leaves and the your uh, plant debris that has been fallen apart in the different parts of the city. These are being put together by the local uh, your sweepers and all that and they generally burn so because of all these reasons uh, reasons it comes so then your uh, coal combustion if there is some companies whether it is various industries are there in each cities because our uh, india is quite vast each and every particular region have their specific uh, uh, you can say identity and they manufacture or pr produce some kind of that particular item from that place. So it, for example, if you uh, see Kanpur, Kanpur has a very uh, 
large number of tanneries because the leather produce are main dominant in the Kanpur. So if you see the Kanpur from these tanneries, what they do, they do, uh, they produce this uh, leather, but the waste which is being generated, some are being earlier uh, being dumped into the water bodies. And apart from that, some wastes are at the end of the industries have been seen to be burned along. When it is being burned along, there is large number of uh, your, uh, since chromium is used uh, in the manufacturing of the leather. So what happens when these, these are being burned, the chromium is being, um, like you can say, put inside into the air bodies. So in the atmosphere, it is being emitted. Because of that, if you see the records of the metal concentrations in Kanpur, you will see a high number of chromium concentration in Kanpur region. Now, if you talk about very nearby city, that is Allahabad. Allahabad does not have these kind of industries. They are very uh, have very large number of this uh, brick clean because the bricks and uh, these uh, uh, stones are being prepared uh, in the uh, around that region. So when you see that, you find the coal combustion is quite dominant in that region. So when you study, study the ambient air or the atmospheric air in that particular region around it, you will find a lot of uh, uh, compounds, whether it is metals and your uh, polycyclic, like organic compounds are being dominant, in, which is coming from the coal combustion. Similarly, it has to be done for the other cities also. As I said, each okay. has some specific uh, sources of each city. Yeah. Then secondly, to answer your question that what is the composition of the air pollution generally in the northern city? So it is a very complex composition. Mostly the, uh, the compounds are mostly the same, but their concentration vary from region to region depending upon the sources strength like what are the sources types and what are their strength when i am talking about the strength strength means uh, if in a particular city suppose kanpur right now there are five like few tanneries but uh, like past one decade back there are more number of tanneries so obviously the concentration of the chromium that time will be very higher as compared to the present time. So the, the strength of the sources means what are the vehicular uh, regions. So let's take the very common example of the vehicular exhaust. There are many cities who does, doesn't have that much of the CNG stations. CNG is quite a cleaner fuel source uh, and uh, but the small cities, for example, I can talk about the Allahabad region. You have very fewer CNG stations. So obviously the residents in that region will not prefer a CNG based automobile because if they buy it, they have to go very far away for a refueling, right? So based on these circumstances, the fuel which is being used in a particular region is because of this region. However, in the Kanpur, there are a lot no, many of the CNG stations. So many of the vehicles are moving on the uh, run on this uh, CNG fuel, but not in the nearby uh, cities. So these are the reasons, uh, reasons behind it. And obviously the compositions are all the organic aerosols, inorganic aerosols, your metals, everything will come. Or okay. now obviously the dust, which is a coarser based. Okay. Yeah. So thanks, thanks, Professor Rajiv. I think uh, this is this is the upshot. I think that I take from what you are saying that different cities, different areas, different regions have different sources, and to be able to uh, counter for the kind of pollution that those cities face, it is important to be able to know that what is causing that pollution. And I think in that vein, I will move to uh, Ajay. And Ajay, you you worked in multiple smaller cities in Bengal, and now you, as I understand, also working in Jharkhand and Odisha. Maybe uh, if you can briefly talk about, uh, from your experience, what, how are the challenges of air pollution in those cities and smaller cities different from those of major metropolitan areas? Thanks. Uh, um, thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, I think uh, uh, the challenges, if you talk about, there are 
multiple way to look at these things. One is that I think the clean air's main problem with air pollution that I see is the problem of visibility. You cannot see air pollution, you know. And uh, then how how can you make it an issue? You have to bring it out through conversations, through discussions, through uh, media, through highlights. You know, when there is more discussions you are aware that there is air pollution. Otherwise, you cannot see it, really. And unfortunately, the discussions are very limited to uh, bigger cities. And that's why uh, even the action that happens is also uh, limited to larger cities. So that is one thing. Second, I think uh, if you look at the flip side of it, uh, the larger cities, the problem is more complex. And even though there are actions in the largest cities, very little has been achieved. But I think from my understanding uh, of what I looked at in the smaller cities, I think these are bigger op opportunities because there uh, it's easier to control uh, the sources and uh, work on it. But the problem is of compliance. Mm -hmm. See, a very visible example of this will be if you go to a large city, you will find a lot of people wearing helmets. But if you go to a smaller city, there is very few people wearing helmets. Why? Because the compliance. You know, there, it's easier for in the smaller city to move around doing things uh, uh, for industry to not follow the norms, for uh, people to not follow norms and uh, municipality workers not being that efficient and all of these things. I think so if we apply some of these very, very small things in smaller cities, a lot can be achieved without a lot of significant investment and uh, significant effort. So uh, the challenges in, in, in small, I would say, is, uh, is in the smaller cities is that the problem is not as big as it is as identified and it's all not on the priority list of uh, people because people are not aware that it is a big problem. And uh, mm -hmm. even for the authorities, it makes not an issue uh, for them to take up. So I think that's where uh, one problem is, uh, but I would say it's rather it's a bigger opportunity in smaller cities to address air pollution than in larger cities. Uh, is is my understanding. Okay, great. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, in in the pre call that when we were trying to understand the various areas of your work, uh, one thing that came through is, and I think which is quite evident in the conversations right now also, is about the awareness. And as you said that it is not visible and uh, it is something which is definitely impacting us. And I think our report clearly mentions that and what Arundhati's presentation was talking about, the impact of PM 2.5 and uh, by the very definition that it is so small, uh, it is difficult to catch. Uh, and there is, while there is a, a concerted need in terms of, say, policy-based uh, uh, intervention to improve the air quality in general of larger areas, uh, there are steps that people can take at a uh, local level as well. And uh, we have Ravi uh, from uh, Aurangabad. And Ravi, I would uh, like to ask you about your experience in working with the communities in Aurangabad and also through the fellowship and also in your work with Prayas Youth Foundation uh, that you have been leading multiple efforts uh, and... Uh, it, there, there is this interesting example of project oxygen zone and a concept of oxygen tax. So maybe if you can briefly talk about that. And then also, uh, I remember that one of the things that uh, you did was this uh, campaign of Havi, uh, Havi Shuddh Hava, which was about uh, creating awareness in uh, common citizens in, in Aurangabad. So agar ap, uske upar thoda sa, if you can share uh, a bit of your experience that how it was to engage communities and raise awareness uh, in Aurangabad. Uh, yes, thank you, sir. As uh, Ajay sir said that air pollution is not visible, it is not visible, it is not visible. Normally, we are Indians or the government authority, when we are not visible, we are not visible, we do not act. We are not active, we are 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 active, 
जो अवेयरनेस का एक स्केल होता है जो टीयर वन सिटी से टीयर टू सिटी या थ्री सिटी में मतलब वो जो होना चाहिए परकुलेट वो नहीं हो पाता है उसके अलग अलग रीजंस हैं तो ये काम करते हुए हमने सोचा कि हम इसमें क्या कंट्रीब्यूट कर सकते हैं जैसे दो टाइप हमने डिसाइड किया कि एक तो जैसे जो गवर्नमेंट अथॉरिटीज है कंसर्न अथॉरिटीज है उनकी क्या रोल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है तो उन्हें जो वो सोच चुके हैं उन्हें जगाने के लिए क्या स्ट्रेटेजी रखनी चाहिए और सेकेंड एज अ सिटीजन हमारा क्या कंट्रीब्यूशन है हमारा क्या कर्तव्य है होना चाहिए क्लीन एयर के लिए तो दो अलग अलग हमने ये किया स्ट्रेटेजी बनाई थी और जैसे फर्स्ट स्ट्रेटेजी में डेटा ओरिएंटेड डेटा लेकर जैसे कि आपने अभी ये रिपोर्ट जो पूरा मतलब कंप्लीट एक रिपोर्ट गवर्नमेंट के साथ में मतलब जाते थे उनसे डिस्कस करते थे कि किस एरिया में जैसे जो भी हमने यहाँ पर वातावरण मित्र के थ्रू जो मॉनिटर्स लगाए थे तो उससे जो डेटा आ रहा था तो उससे भी हम ओरल कम्युनिकेशन या फिर रिटर्न में कम्युनिकेशन कर रहे थे तो ये काफी हेल्पफुल हो रहा था साथ में एक सिटीजन को अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करने में आ, काफी हेल्पफुल था जैसे सर ने कहा अभी कि विजिबिलिटी नहीं थी लेकिन जब सेंसर मॉनिटर लग रहे थे और वहां के लोगों को जब पता चल रहा था कि नहीं यहाँ पर हमारे एरिया में जो एयर पोल्यूशन का लेवल है वो काफी ज्यादा है या फिर मतलब किस लेवल का है तो उससे भी मतलब काफी अवेयरनेस क्रिएट हुई सेकेंड एक जो सिटीजन लेवल के ऊपर था कि मतलब हम क्या कर सकते हैं तो उसके अंदर हमने मल्टीपल जो बर्निंग होती थी स्पेशली जो ड्राई लीफ बर्न किए जाते हैं अभी तो वो हमने कलेक्ट करने का मतलब इनिशिएटिव किया काफी जगह पर हमने मतलब कम्युनिटी वाइज उसका मतलब सेंटर बनाया और वहां उसे कंपोस्ट करने लगे तो जिस ड्राई लीफ को बर्न कर दिया जाता था एक प्रॉब्लम में कन्वर्ट कर दिया जाता था तो कम्पोस्ट करके हम उसे सोल्यूशन में कन्वर्ट करने लगे तो इससे भी काफी एक मतलब पॉजिटिव इम्पैक्ट हुआ इसके अलावा जो हवी शुद्ध हवा जो मतलब क्लीन हवा हमें क्लीन हवा चाहिए मतलब जो हिंदी में उसका मीनिंग होता है उसके लिए भी मतलब हमने स्पेशली फोकस किया कि जो गवर्नमेंट बॉडीज हैं तो उन्होंने क्या करना चाहिए तो उसके थ्रू मतलब जो भी सिटी के अंदर बहुत सारे फाउंटेन वगैरह है वो मतलब हमने उनसे मतलब जो बंद पड़ चुके थे तो उसे रिस्ट्रो करने के मतलब प्रयास किए ताकि मतलब जो पार्टिकल्स है वो सेटल हो पाए और बहुत सारे इसमें होता था जैसे म्यूनिसपल कॉरपोरेशन के थ्रू भी वो मतलब जो स्वीप होता था ड्राई लीफ वो भी मतलब बर्निंग के इसमें ही जाता था कोई सिस्टम नहीं था मतलब प्रॉपर उसे कलेक्ट करने के लिए तो वो भी हमने कंटिन्यू फॉलोअप लेके वो सिस्टम क्रिएट कराया तो अभी वो मतलब मैक्सिमम जो पार्ट है वो कंपोस्टिंग में जाता है हमारी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है प्रयास यूथ फाउंडेशन तो बेसिकली हम ट्री प्लांटेशन इसमें काम कर रहे हैं एयर पोल्यूशन को मिटिगेट करने के लिए सबसे बड़ा सोर्स तो है कि उसके सोर्स को ही खत्म कर दिया जाए और जो सेकेंडरी है तो वो कैसे मतलब हो तो एक प्लांटेशन में भी हम उसी स्केल पे ये कर रहे हैं और कोशिश करते हैं कि जो बिग शेड ट्रीज हैं जैसे पीपल है बनियान है जो कार्बन को न्यूट्रल करने में ज्यादा रोल प्ले करते हैं तो वैसे सब प्लांटेशन हम कर रहे हैं okay. So I'll I'll come back to you again. Uh, I think जो आप कर रहे हैं बड़े लेवल पे we have uh, Shivani who uh, whose company You Breathe has uh, tried to do something similar at a small scale, where they are using plant based technology. Uh, what I understand is called phyto remediation uh, to clean the indoor air, and and as we understand that as air pollution has been increasing. uh it is technology that has been coming to rescue especially in larger cities and uh, there are multiple kinds of technologies and air purifying technology is one of them and then of course we have uh, we can we can switch to electric vehicles or we can wear a mask and all of those things but this is something that is being uh, that is being picked up a lot and like in a lot of delhi homes and a lot of other the northern cities you see that so i wanted to ask you shivani uh, given that technology is playing a significant role in addressing air pollution uh, your company has developed this innovation innovative solution for uh, enhancing air purification uh, how do you think that this technology can be useful for smaller cities and are there already some cities in which the demand for uh, uh, such products is already seeing a rise Uh, very happy to hear everybody all those because talk about what they are doing especially ravi ji uh, because wo large scale pe jo cheez kar rahe hain i mean i would love to be part of that also because uh, it's again related to nature um coming to you breathe and uh, what we are doing is quite simple to understand actually so i'll not complicate it for everybody else 
it's we are just trying to uh, do what trees do outside inside people's homes but faster and make it more efficient to aap ye soch lo ki agar hamara ek product aapke ghar pe hai to one plant so this is one of our products the mini it's right behind me um so this does the work of 20 plants so keeping in mind the um, limitations of space and size of a house or a room obviously aap 50 ped ghar ke andar nahi laga sakte it's very difficult so uh, what what is the solution the solution is to kind of um, figure out how technology can help but we are trying to make technology leverage nature एंड uh, इसीलिए हम कहते हैं कि हमारे कोर एथिक्स सस्टेनेबिलिटी है बिकॉज वी आर ट्राइंग आर बेस्ट टू बी सस्टेनेबल इन आर बिजनेस इन आर प्रोडक्ट एंड मेक श्योर दर हमारा प्रोडक्ट वापस घूम के मतलब नेचर से ही आया और नेचर में वापस चला जाए इवेंचुअली एंड इट डज नॉट क्रिएट एडिशनल वेस्ट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू योर क्वेश्चन अबाउट स्मॉलर सिटीज तो आई थिंक देखिए मोस्टली वी केटर टू इंडोर एयर पोल्यूशन यू ब्रीथ मोस्टली केटर्स टू इंडोर एयर पोल्यूशन बिकॉज आउटडोर एयर पोल्यूशन के लिए ऑब्वियसली पॉलिसी लेवल चेंजेस चाहिए एंड अवेयरनेस चाहिए एंड बहुत सारी और चीज़ें चाहिए बट आई पर्सनली ऑनेस्टली बिलीव एन आर मार्केटिंग स्ट्रैटेजी इज ऑल्सो ड्रिवेन बाई दिस दैट इंडिविजुअल एक्शन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंडिविजुअल पर्सनल एक्शन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और वो तब तक आप उसको अदरवाइज लार्ज स्केल नहीं कर सकते पीपल विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ गुड एयर क्वालिटी बिकॉज एज अजय जी एंड रवि जी बोथ करेक्टली सेट कि इट्स एन इनविजिबल प्रॉब्लम उनको दिखाई नहीं देता है अपने घर के अंदर या अपने घर के बाहर या कहीं पर भी तो उनको लगता है ये प्रॉब्लम नहीं है टिल दे स्टार्ट फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम विद इट स्पेशली फॉर एग्जाम्पल मी आई एम फ्रॉम जमशेदपुर विच इज इन झारखंड टीयर टू सिटी तेरह पंद्रह लाख की पॉपुलेशन है and uh, it's an industrial town so it's got very bad aqi as compared to the green cover that is there to hum assume kar lete hain ki green hai bahut zyada to acha air quality matlab honi chahiye achi quality hogi but what if the green cover is not able to combat the amount of pollution so there is lot of industries usko combat nahi kar pata hai hamara green cover so i think when it comes to our technology we are also working on some technology jo ki semi outdoor spaces mein use ho sake but there are ways obviously on a policy level that we can uh, sort of extrapolate this and make this technology work on a much much larger scale but the beginning of it will always be from individual action and individual action unfortunately cannot happen जब तक आप एजुकेट ना कर दे लोगों को एयर क्वालिटी के बारे में फॉर दैट रीजन आई थिंक स्कूल्स शुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट आई मीन वी हैड एनवायरमेंटल साइंसेस व्हेन वी वर स्टडीइंग बट आई डोंट थिंक इट्स देयर एनी मोर इन स्कूल्स तो वो एक जो हटा दिया है ना उन्होंने इट्स अ बिग प्रॉब्लम आई थिंक बिकॉज दैट इज वॉट गॉट मी इन दिस आई मीन आई आई एम मोर अवेयर ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट आई एम मोर अवेयर ऑफ माई ओन चॉइसिस whether they are sustainable or not even in my personal life and hence i think about things like air pollution and so on and so forth water pollution all other kinds of pollution hence we think of as a company jo hum log hain in the company hum log sochte hain ki hamara product kaise aur kaise aisa ban jaye ki hum log bilkul bhi kisi bhi cheez ko pollute nahi kare na land ko na water ko na soil ko na air ko or i am noise pollution but no pollution should happen but again it all comes down to having some level of individual action so but this individual action as of now you saying is largely uh, in larger cities there are not so many mostly because larger cities people one people are more aware mm -hmm. uh, people are more um, interested in their personal health and well being because i think larger cities have uh, a large population of people who are uh, working and also living alone so they they have more fo matlab unka focus zyada rehta hai apni well being pe but smaller cities i don't think there's a lot of focus on their own well being um and the healthcare systems also not very supportive of that so air pollution becomes a very like a latter concern like it's an afterthought it's never the first thought like even for me 
each and every person in my family has had some uh, problem. My grandmother has asthma. So every single person in my family has had some problem that is directly or indirectly related to air pollution because we've always lived in that city. And there is extreme amount of industrial pollution, but we never think of the source or cause as air pollution. We always think, we don't know how it happened. It's right in front of you. You know the reason, you can see the cause, but people don't think of it like that because they're like, dikh nahi raha na. Jab tak aapko dikh nahi raha, tab tak wo exist nahi karta. To smaller cities mein individual action isi liye aur zyada difficult hai because awareness nahi hai, education nahi hai. And awareness hoti bhi nahi hai because companies who are trying to sell air purifiers, you will never see an air purifier ad running in a small town. You'll never see a billboard about air purifiers in a small town. And I don't understand why. Why not? I mean, indoor pollution is happening in every single city. And I just saw the data today. Um, the most popul- the most uh, polluted cities are Amritsar, Ambala, um, Chandigarh. These are not, I mean, Chandigarh is a little bit larger, but these are not very big cities. Amritsar is not a big city at all. Then why? I mean, right? I think that's the, I think that's the that point that... Point. that- which is very important that we are trying to raise that the impact and the 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 city as a contributor as well as a sufferer these smaller cities are quite prominently there but the awareness and the action is still not there so i think it's uh, your point makes it very pertinent to note uh, i think i will maybe uh, now come back uh, and try to get some common perspectives on uh, certain aspects of your work which are relevant to uh, this research as well as to practice and one of the themes that we have seen is the uh, you know limited amount of data limited amount of awareness and since we have a researcher uh, with us i thought maybe uh, uh, professor pradhi if you could uh, briefly share uh, what are some of the challenges uh, when it comes to doing research in smaller cities on say a topic such as air pollution uh, like right now if even if i want to do some research on uh, if i was a researcher and if i was to do something on on my hometown in rishikesh or maybe in dehradun the number of sensors or from where i can get this data is very limited so and you've been doing this for some time so i just wanted to ask that as a researcher what are some of these data gaps or other kind of knowledge gaps that you uh, face when it comes to understanding air pollution in smaller cities data gaps so as you know there is continuous monitoring stations in all the cities depending mm-hmm. upon their population size right mm-hmm. so uh, in the bigger cities uh, for me as a researcher i generally use my own facilities to capture the data and then analyze the data and get the output as it is mm-hmm. uh, Apart from that, uh, in the like, suppose there are continuous monitoring stations, they need to be in these continuous monitoring stations, there are many instruments that is being installed for measuring the parameters, which is showed on the display, like your PM, PM 2.5, your gases level, your uh, different uh, uh, like xylene, benzene, all all these constituents level, right? So, when it is being measured by an instrument, that instrument needs to be calibrated from time to time. Okay. And uh, we don't know how frequently they do the calibration or maintain these systems because I'm, uh, as a person or as a researcher, me and you don't go and like calibrate these instruments. Yes. These has to be handled by the organizations who are maintaining it and then they do it. Obviously, mm-hmm. they do it, but we don't know the frequency of how they are doing it mm-hmm. and when they are doing it. So, mm-hmm. this is uh, one of the aspects. Apart from it, one thing I would say, the, the Ajay made a very good point that mm-hmm. in the bigger cities, the implementation aspect of any of the things is very frequent and more more effective as compared to a smaller city or a mid-sized mm-hmm. city. For example, in the very starting, I said that suppose a CNG stations has to be placed. CNG, you know the uh, 
number of the cng stations in delhi the number of cng stations suppose here in lucknow and uh, or maybe uh, in patna may be much higher be the capital cities but in the tier 2 cities like your kanpur your alabad in the up or in bihar if we talk about the gaya muzaffarpur all these cities they may or may not have that much many of the cng stations i don't know the number maybe they have one or two or whatsoever but obviously their frequency is not that frequent so that the people who are buying new vehicles also they mostly prefer either the diesel or the petrol uh, fuel based uh, automobile so yeah. this is one of the limitations because if the diesel emission uh, diesel engines has been considered one of my study i have also reported that how the very carcinogenic compounds like polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are being uh, emitted from the different types of fuel exhaust in which diesel emissions is one of the highest apart from your wood combustion and coal combustion now if you go also in a uh more mid sized or the smaller cities you will also feel that in the residential areas apart from the lpg many people usually for go for the coal based fuel for the cooking purpose or the wood combustion mm -hmm. uh we are going uh, doing an like a study in which we are seeing that how many households are running on a lpg and then coal based or the wood combustion based but uh, this the use of both lpg and wood combustion or the coal combustion is much higher in a uh, your uh, second tier street cities than a capital city or a bigger city so once this they are using a wood combust like fuel in a local in a like very uh, you can say restricted environment they burn this on the chulha which we call it and the people who are living inside that house they are very very highly exposed to this kind of a pollutant and they are very very harmful for them so reaching to these people spreading the knowledge that people say that like in a general mean mostly common manner people generally believe that if you cook very locally yeah it's good that you are cooking locally but not in a very confined space if you are cooking outside obviously they are uh, releasing a lot of emissions in the atmosphere and the pollutants are being released both of these are harmful but in a confined space it is much more harmful for your health very very harmful so first thing the uh, these people should be no should be made aware of that cooking on a wood uh, uh, based fuel or a coal based fuel is very very harmful for them for their family members then only they will understand the importance of not cooking and using a uh, okay so the pcbs in multiple northern states and i think this air pollution is definitely a yeah. a much larger issue in the northern cities as compared to some of the southern cities and even in delhi i think out of 344 posts almost 233 posts are vacant so yeah. i think that what you were referring to in terms of the air quality monitoring stations or a lot of these infrastructure that is required to because there are two parts of it one is the larger policy based data which can inform our understanding of what the pollution is there and mm. if those machines and those instruments are not calibrated if that data doesn't come out and that is something that report also mentions very clearly that for so many cities the data doesn't come out regularly it has not been working so i think there is a capacity gap in pollution control board so that is one part of the gap and the second part that you referred to is about the awareness uh, uh, like in a, in a household you wouldn't know that what is the air quality inside what is causing the pollution and you might be uh, involuntarily breathing toxic air and i think yeah. that's where i want to ask uh, ajay and uh, i remember uh, talking to you earlier and reading some of the things that you've been doing that this part of awareness in trying to tell people the health impacts 
the impact of uh, the toxic air which might be lingering around uh, your own city there are people who go for walks in the morning when the air is still polluted and uh, what are some of these uh, strategies that you have adopted in your network uh, to make people aware about these impacts of uh, bad air quality and what has worked yeah uh, so i think uh, we have tried a lot of things and uh, one thing we fairly understood with very early is that throwing a lot of data a lot of technical uh, thing it's good for our absorption and our understanding but it makes no sense to the larger masses a lot of people will still not understand what aqi means you can say 400 is the aqi what it means to me nothing as a lay person what because it doesn't ring a bell if i say yes. if someone has a fever like 103 it still rings a bell but aqi 400 makes no sense uh, so it is very important uh, how you communicate and how you engage people uh, mm. uh, in these things so you have to uh, so what are the things that we did like for example uh, in uh, when uh, on yoga day uh, we did uh, yoga with mask as baths. This is pre-COVID thing when okay. mask could still be used as a symbol of air pollution, you know. And uh, so the idea there was to do two things. One is get the media attention, and mm. uh, there is a captive audience in the parks and places who are also very uh, conscious of their health. This is a very good audience to talk to because air pollution discussion has to be personalized to the. Uh, okay. What it does to your health, that is where I am concerned rather than what 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 is the air quality. That air quality may be anything, but it will not make any sense under, unless I communicate why it matters to me, how it affects me, my children or others. That is very important. So that is one thing we did. Second is that we also did some fun activities in schools. We uh, took balloons in schools and we asked people, uh, did a challenge about students to uh, kind of blow, how many balloons can you blow and this thing. And see, these are simple things to tell them about the lung capacity. And then you start discussion over that and then you tell them about how air quality affects uh, your lung capacity and all of those things. And then you have a discussion. And then we always make sure we had some uh, medical representative or doctor with us. You know, a doctor wearing a coat and telling you something about health makes you take it more seriously rather than a just that person going and eats it. So we, every year, do press conferences where we ask the doctors, a panel, mm -hmm. to come and tell people about their quality and this thing. That is taken more seriously than uh, any of us uh, talking about air quality and the impacts of health, you know. Mm -hmm. So these are some examples uh, that I can uh, think of. So overall, the uh, point of... Uh, uh, this thing is that the communication has to be personalized. It Ultimately, human beings uh, understand things and take action on emotions. And if you don't uh, evoke that emotion in that uh, person about, uh, uh, about the understanding of their quality, that person will not. But if you successfully do that, that person will understand uh, things and then they will all, they'll be curious to know what they can do about air quality. They may be thinking ways to uh, improve the air quality within their household or within their environment and all of these things. That's a natural way of doing it. Once you tell someone uh, that you are diabetic, that person, even if eating mindlessly, will be a little conscious about what they eat. You know? So, yeah. Okay. Uh so Ravi, you also had a similar experience, I believe, in uh, in Aurangabad, where uh, I think not necessarily to have uh, a very uh, community-based approach in terms of uh, using communication for uh, making people aware of the harmful impact. But there was, I think, during the fellowship, you were mentioning that uh, there was a low-cost sensor that was... Uh, uh, installed in one particular location. So once data starts becoming available, uh, even though, as I just said, that sometimes for a lot of people, that data specifically does not make any sense. But if there is availability of a number which can serve as an anchor for conversation. Uh, so did you see something once this air quality number or say the, the presence of particulate matter or pollution in the air was visible? and how that changed the perception, your own perception and of the people who are living there. 
so let us uh, yes actually uh, jab ye uh, monitors humne uh, alag alag locations pe install kiye the तो काफी इसके मतलब जो रिजल्ट्स आए पहले तो मतलब हम जस्ट गेज कर रहे थे कि सिटी के इस कॉर्नर में पोल्यूशन ज्यादा होगा क्योंकि यहाँ इस तरफ इंडस्ट्री है या फिर और है तो ऐसे बहुत सारे मतलब जो हमने एक अजम्पन था हमारा उसके बाद जब मॉनिटर्स लगे और वहां से जो डेटा आने लगा तो वो मतलब काफी मतलब हमारा मतलब थॉट प्रोसेस उससे चेंज हुआ कि सिर्फ जो विजिबल है वही नहीं है ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि जैसे मतलब जहाँ कुछ उतने उसके इंडिकेटर्स नहीं दिख रहे हैं वहां भी मतलब वहां का ए जो है वो काफी खराब हो तो ऐसे बहुत सारे ये थे साथ में जो कम्युनिटी के साथ जब ये सेंसर्स लगाए गए हमने क्योंकि हमने सिर्फ सेंसर लगाए ही नहीं तो उस पूरे सोसाइटी में या जहाँ हम लगा रहे थे तो लोगों को भी बुला रहे थे उन्हें अवेयर कर रहे थे कि ये रेड अगर होता है तो इसका मतलब है कि आप डेंजर जोन में हो तो बहुत सारे बहुत बार ऐसे हुए कि कम्युनिटी से कॉल आया कि ये तो अभी रेड में है इसे ग्रीन में करने के लिए क्या करना पड़ेगा तो जैसे मतलब जो भी है स्वीपिंग है या फिर बर्निंग है उसे मतलब हमने छोटे छोटे कुछ ऑप्शंस बताए कि आप अपने लेवल पे ये कर सकते हो या फिर जैसे कोई म्यूनिसपल कॉरपोरेशन का कोई पर्सन है जो आस गार्बेज बर्निंग कर रहा है तो उसे भी मतलब आप टोक सकते हो तो एक ओवरऑल काफी आ, मतलब जो डेटा ओरिएंटेड इसका ये था वो सब लेकर फिर हम जब म्यूनिसपल कॉरपोरेशन में गए तो उसका भी काफी इम्पैक्ट हुआ क्योंकि पहले हम जा रहे हैं और बिगर मतलब डेटा की बात कर रहे हैं तो वो एक अलग इम्पैक्ट होता है और ये सब जो मतलब डेटा के साथ में हम जा रहे हैं क्योंकि उसमें पूरा मतलब स्ट्रक्चर्ड वे से डेटा मतलब हमें मिल रहा था कि कौन से समय में पोल्यूशन लेवल क्या है और उसके ऊपर फिर हमने कुछ रिकमेंडेशन दिए सजेशन दिए तो वो भी मतलब अथॉरिटी ने उसे सीरियस लिया और काफी मतलब एक समझ लीजिए कहीं ना कहीं मतलब उस समय से अभी तक कुछ ना कुछ कुछ ना कुछ एक्टिविटी मतलब वो शुरू हो गई okay. इस फील्ड में यस दैट्स लाइक अ लैम्प दैट इज लिट ओके सो शिवानी आई डोंट नो इफ इन योर केस डू यू फेस एनी काइंड ऑफ डेटा गैप्स यू मेंशन दैट लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ योर क्लाइंटेल ऑफ कोर्स इज फोकस्ड ऑन लार्जर सिटीज Uh, but do you see any challenges uh, in future if you were to like we hope that smaller cities don't ever need your products uh, not wishing you uh, uh, <laughs> it's it's not to say that because uh, uh, it does impact your business but if uh, you were to see some challenges that you breathe might face in expanding to smaller cities in promoting more adoption in such technologies in smaller city what would be some of those challenges and is data Uh, one of those challenge like i'm assuming that for marketing research data is one of the key component it is definitely a challenge uh, and it's because of um, i mean a lot of inherent bias that we have when we are look doing our research also obviously uh, but also i feel like uh, most of our data like as of now for marketing most of our data comes from a lot of online usage right mm. we do have uh, secondary research data as well but wo hum jo primary research bhi hamari rehti hai analysis rehta hai hamara insights rehte hain uh, us data se yahi pata chalta hai that it's not that people are not thinking about it in smaller cities uh, mm. they are thinking about it we see a lot of people coming to our website uh, reading a lot of our blogs we do a lot of blogs uh, on you know various um, how to maintain your home aqi indoor aqi because primarily the concern is indoor air quality even for smaller cities obviously if you live near a construction site or if there is some construction going on in your own building then the aqi is going to be through the roof even in a small city to fir aap uh, when i say even in a small city i mean even in a very good air quality wala small city right so uh, maybe a hilly uh, region i just read a couple of names to in that case uh, people do want to read blogs they want to understand they want to see the data they also want to understand but a lot of it uh, i think gets scattered uh, by the time it reaches us because um, again um, i would again come back to the awareness point of view people unless so we see a lot a big link a huge link of literacy level income level with um, the kind of searches we get or kind of uh, you know people who call us to ask for the price and things like that 
Hmm. Uh, one of the reasons is because, again, as I said, it's not their for, it's not their priority. Air quality in their house is not the priority. priority. Um, in smaller cities, the priority is first clean water, access to clean water. Luckily, I was brought up in Jamshedpur where uh, Tata takes care of the water and the electricity and everything. So I never had to suffer the problem of clean drinking water. But I know for a fact in a lot of other cities, clean drinking water is a problem. Not just small cities, large cities also have been facing clean water problem so in that case so uh, as i was talking about the education level and income level when you have a larger amount of disposable income that is when you start thinking of investing in air wellness products air wellness in general or in your health in general how many people it's a very direct correlation right if you just think about how many people in smaller towns have health insurance i mean You'll, you'll, if you see the data, it'll be, you'll, you'll understand that it's a very small number. Even if they've suffered, um, you know, financial loss because of their health and because of being in the, being at the hospital or because of medical expenses, they are still not very sure about getting health insurance because that's not their first concern. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, we do see there's a lot of people who come to our website, want to talk to us, want to get the product, but they eventually don't end up getting it even if the AQI is bad. And I would personally always try to blame it on the local media there because the local mm. media doesn't cover it. The local media doesn't cover Jamshedpur air quality ever. They will never talk about, oh, you know, winters are coming. If you see there's there's like blurry, if everything is dark, then it's air quality. It's not fog, it's not so cold, it's not so cold. It's dark because it's bad air quality. So they don't cover it ever cover it. Hmm. Okay. So uh, I think uh, I will also be mindful of the time. I'm glad that I was able to at least do two major parts that I wanted to get from both of you, from all of you. Uh, but there are still some open questions that I wanted to ask. And uh, maybe I'll try to ask pointed questions. But if you, any of you feel that you can try to answer that more uh, pertinently, then please feel free to take over. But one of the things that we, as I said, that the basics that we are trying to understand for a common citizen and for some of the organizations that are based in smaller cities to uh, counter declining air quality is first to understand what this is. Uh, what it means and the report as well as some of the perspectives that you have shared kind of define that uh, what does air pollution really mean and uh, what is its impact i think the impact part is something that uh, i wanted to also check uh, maybe uh, in your experiences uh, maybe mostly from i think ajay or dr rajiv are there what are the kind of health impacts uh, that people in smaller cities are facing or have faced because of uh, such decline in air quality uh, what are some of the you know very obvious uh, ramifications of bad air on people uh, like we've we've theoretically we have covered the like it is linked with almost every ailment that one can have but are there something are there any uh, you had doctors in your uh, conferences in your uh, i think uh, uh, some of the awareness campaigns. So are there any specific health impacts that people should be aware of uh, in, in such cities and what can they do to uh, kind of counter them? So uh, Tarun, actually, hmm. not even for the smaller cities, any region any place, yes, who, yeah. which has any kind of these sources mm -hmm. and they are being exposed to very high level of uh, this pollutant mm -hmm. uh, levels so the first thing which will be impacted will be their respiratory system mm -hmm. obviously then obviously it will enter into your, your blood streams and will reach every organ of your body ultimately so it will for any human body it will it has been seen in the many studies which has been mm -hmm. discussed in kind of, uh, as you said, conferences and the workshops in the, when people de do a lot of researches. So it's not going to affect only one organ of the body. Mm -hmm. However, for any different individual, somebody or the other will have uh, one of the weaker uh, organ system or may have some like 
precursors of it so it was going to uh, elevate that specific problem in some way or the other or it will combining with that particular problem it has been seen like if somebody has with their uh, genetics they have the cardiac uh, problems like cardiovascular problems so if they are being exposed to such high levels of pollution level the chances of them having more of this problem will be increased mm -hmm. as well as apart from it the lungs obviously the respiratory system will be the first impacted one okay. so yeah many researches even the lancet papers group of papers have indicated that how it is going to affect the most affected is the chronic obstructive uh, mm -hmm. uh, pulmonary diseases your lung cancer and all this diseases which is the first case yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any specific uh, kind of pollutants that cause uh, these, uh, like as we understand that this air pollution is like in terms yes. of their chemical substances, there are gaseous pollutants. So uh, are there any specific kinds of pollutants which are more harmful than the others? So mostly your transition metals, like mm -hmm. if you name your chromium, cadmium, arsenic, lead, they are going to affect the first then uh, mm -hmm. if if they are present in the particulate matter sec okay. secondly the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons the okay. higher the molecular uh, this composition means it is said high molecular weight uh, mm -hmm. polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons these okay. are the most hazardous and it has been labeled by the us epa also and everybody that these are the most hazardous air pollutants that are uh, present mm. in the atmosphere yeah and they are mostly and in, in terms of the sources they are a lot of them come from vehicular yes. emissions. Uh, right. a lot of them come from the vehicular emissions your coal combustion your wood combustion your uh, cow dung cake combustion your uh, okay. uh, any kind of the sources which gives the incomplete combustion incomplete, incomplete combustion yes the fuel is not getting enough of the oxygen to have mm. a complete combustion, the more the incomplete combustion will be, the more will be these kind of a pollutants will be emerged. Okay, yeah. so then, then uh, it is not that uh, smaller cities don't have all these sources. No, yeah. every every mm. cities, every region has yes, these sources. Yes. Even uh, the bigger, mm. smaller, mid-sized, every region. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, thanks. I think that's very helpful to uh, kind of visualize that if you have something like this burning near you, then you can be aware that you might have PCH or you may have Okay. Any insights, uh, are you, uh, Ajay, uh, Shivani, you also working on creating a, in a way, a, a health product. Uh, so yeah. any such so impacts I, that you have come across that you I use think, to communicate? I think uh, one thing that I wanted to just talk about was um, a lot of our small cities in general don't understand how um, the environment works as a system, just like a lot of us don't understand how the body works as a system. Like, I think I have a headache, so there must be something wrong with my brain, head, mental, this area maybe. But my headache could be because of acidity, which is somewhere else in my body. So we don't correlate that very often. And the same, same thing happens when we stop correlating that. That's why I think uh, with respect to smaller cities, even the policy making is such that um, maybe research is also not uh, very clear on that uh, aspect in smaller cities. Uh, that people um, are unable to see a, a bird's eye view or a macro view of how each and every action of them and the government is impacting the environment and hence everything else related to it. So we talk so much about climate action, but I don't see any policy making with respect to climate action on that level in smaller cities for sure. And if there is no climate action, I mean, air pollution is not a single existent problem, right? As uh, Dr. Pradi has been saying, infrastructure is very important. So if I don't have, like we keep talking about electric vehicles and reducing uh, vehicular emissions and all of that, a lot of countries have executed electric vehicles. Their buses are also electric. They're not using fuel anymore and their vehicular, um, you know, um, 
pollution has become very little because they have that kind of infrastructure where they don't have to worry about evs charging and you know things like that but at this point we don't have that kind of an infrastructure where i can think all right even if i have an electric vehicle i can take a road trip and go to shimla because i don't know if i'll be able to get there because i know there are fuel stations there are gas i mean there are petrol stations diesel stations cng is of course if cng is also not there yet how can i expect evs to be there yet so a lot of uh, infrastructural level and there has to be some uh, national level uh, political level policy level implementation done here without that or some kind of they have to intervene in some manner without that intervention it's very difficult to depend only on entrepreneurs uh, you know to be to to execute all of these things although entrepreneurs are doing their best uh, especially climate entrepreneurs are doing their best to do as much as possible but we can't solely depend on them even they need some push from like policy level push to be executed to be able to execute this so uh, ajay ravi anything that you wanted to add in terms of the impacts that you might have seen it doesn't have to be health impact but uh, i think that is one of the i think the, the larger impacts the direct impact that uh, air pollution has uh, which you use for communication or which you use for uh, kind of making people aware uh, in your respective cities so i think uh, the quick point i wanted to make on the health uh, point here one is that hmm. uh, as uh, the others also mentioned air pollution doesn't discriminate whether you are living in a smaller city or a large city it will affect you uh, there but if you are in a smaller city you probably have lesser amount of resources and infrastructure to uh, address the issue to be diagnosed with the problem hmm. to get care to identify that you have a problem and hmm. uh, seek help for that so that is uh, one aspect of it and second is um, as uh, 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 pradeep ji also mentioned uh, mm -hmm. the source of pollution and the type of pollutant is also a very big factor now i can be closer to a source of pollutant which is due to a local industry near me something like that which is exposing me to a uh, higher risk for example Uh, a very good example of this is the uh, whole discussion of air pollution becomes very hot during diwali you know uh, and uh, if you see because it's more visible as a pollutant you know uh, than uh, other uh, sources which are throughout the year but it is not probably getting this thing when i am driving a car also i may not realize how much of pollution i am causing but when i am burning a product this thing but also a factor to recognize here is that uh, the uh, the exposure to a pollutant of mm. uh, from the tracker the heavy metals and all of those things it probably will cause a lot of harm to the only difference is that i will not do it throughout the year it will happen to me only for the specific week but the point here to uh, make is that is that uh, unless people understand uh, the risk involved and if they may be uh, placed in a point which are, they are it is putting them to higher risk they don't know they are not aware uh, of this issue so uh, it's it's difficult uh, to communicate uh, to this people because you cannot create a simple communication tell people ab about uh, these things right true thanks any uh, insights uh, ravi ji if you want to yes sir have any closing uh, actually uh, जो एयर पोल्यूशन का इम्पैक्ट है वो हेल्थ में तो सभी ने मतलब उसके पॉइंटर्स बताए हैं बट एक और बात है कि जैसे जो डेवलपमेंट के ऊपर भी इसके बैरियर आते हैं कि एक सर्टेन लेवल से अगर एयर पोल्यूशन बढ़ जाता है तो फिर इंडस्ट्री के लिए भी लिमिटेशन आ जाते हैं रिस्ट्रिक्शन सम रिस्ट्रिक्शन आ जाते हैं और फिर नई इंडस्ट्री वहाँ मतलब नहीं आ सकती है और ये सभी का एक सामूहिक प्रयास होना चाहिए सभी नागरिकों को एक साथ और सभी अथॉरिटीज को एक साथ आकर इस वॉर में शामिल होना चाहिए और मुझे पूरा यकीन है कि आपका जो ये प्रयास है नागरिक का जो एक प्रयास है ये डेफिनेटली एक अच्छा एक पॉजिटिव हमारे इन्वायरमेंट में क्रिएट करेगा थैंक यू थैंक यू रवि जी मैं दस मिनट हमको अब रिपोर्ट भी लॉन्च करना है एंड में बट आई थॉट कि थोड़ा सा टाइम वी कैन लीव इफ देर एनी ऑडियंस क्वेश्चंस एंड इफ पीपल हैड 
uh, course there was a lot of ground that i wanted to cover but i think i'll be very happy with i'm very happy with what we were already able to cover and uh, agar audience mein se koi log kuch puchna chahe uh, i have this question uh, that i am a masters in planning student and um, since like uh, we are studying about uh, these topics related to physical infrastructure and social infrastructure and i have realized that if we uh, on our education level like if we want to conduct some uh, sort of study uh, in which um, like aqi or air quality is one of the aspects so we have observed that it is very difficult for us as well to like gather data and also uh, like mm -hmm. we were doing a small study in bahadurgarh region so uh, we had observed that when we were talking to the uh, msme departments and all then we realized that uh, that they said uh, Uh, like in um the websites where they mentioned the pollution control uh, targets of uh, uh, the factories which are like green rated and the ones that are red rated so only the factories that have licensed themselves or registered themselves are the ones uh, for whom that marking has been done in such big cities like bahadurgarh and all and the factories that have not like listed themselves are not even mentioned so they are still you know creating that pollution and everything and that is not even in coming into the data and the charts so um like this was just an observation that i had mm. felt and i wanted to share uh, not more of a question thing okay so no, i think that's well taken that right in front of us there is enough uh, non compliance even in cities which are uh, uh, you know like bahadurgarh is still like it itself is a separate place but uh, uh, given the industrial profile one would expect that the level of compliance is more but it is not uh, usha has her hand raised yeah namaste mm. like uh, right now i'm residing in aurangabad chatrapati shivaji nagar uh, mm. but i'm properly from uti tamil nadu uh, and my question is like um, Uh, previously i i also doesn't aware about the, the air pollution or whatever it it causes previously mm -hmm. so much uh, years previously but when i went back to my hometown on my holidays i can see that uh, uh, like in proper uti we are not allowing the plastic also some of the measures are taken up there in the uh, main area of uti some of the measures are taken uh, from the government itself from the collectorate itself but uh, in the interior sites maybe we can see about the villages uh, which are going through they doesn't aware about the pollution itself for mm. example i can say the uh, the fire which is uh, chula what you have called that as uh, that is burned in our homes itself very normally because mm. it's very uh, normal to our lifestyle from our uh, birth actually from from my birth i am seeing it and from my grandma grandpa they are very usually using it because it, it it's our uh, like a in it, it's our part of life itself we used to uh, cook a food by that only maximum right now also it's available there and we have a uh, that kind of chula in our homes itself inside the homes itself but the uh, like pollution it is uh, we have a tunnel like structure over there so we we'll leave the air uh, uh, pollution out of that tunnel so uh, another one thing and uh, the uh, like uh, the plastics or whatever it is uh, in the villages particular villages they are throwing it as it is and they are burning it uh, as it is that also mm. happening because it may be in the cities they may aware about some things and uh, the government or the ngos are working on it uh, uh, to protect those things so they are av uh, aware about it and we are taking some of the measures on that but in the village areas even the people doesn't aware that what will happen if we are doing this how we uh, go with the uh, i got a uh, how we can go with the uh, measures or how we can aware them uh, by giving a training or by giving some kind of awareness session to them like that i just want to know about it uh, if someone else is conducting like that kind of sessions or awareness uh, programs 
in villages or in some cities can i know about that kind of sessions and how would uh, it should be established to the people to make them aware about it i just want to know about it if someone else is conducting like that kind of session can i know about it sure uh, yeah. anybody who wants to mention i think ravito is uh, unike sher mein hai aap to इन छत्रपति शंभाजी नगर सो आई एम श्योर यू शुड कनेक्ट विद रवि एक बार तो गिवन दैट हिज फाउंडेशन इज डूइंग अलॉट ऑफ दिस वर्क एंड मे बी वी कैन ट्राई टू पुट अप सम रिसोर्सेज ऑफ सच ट्रेनिंग्स इन रूरल एरियाज ऑल्सो एंड वी विल मेक इट पार्ट ऑफ दी एज एन एनिक्शर ऑफ द रिपोर्ट बट अजय रवि शिवानी जी प्राधी इफ देर इज एनी बडी वॉन्ट्स टू आंसर हर क्वेश्चन इन टर्म्स ऑफ सो एक्चुअली मैम ने काफी एक वैलिड पॉइंट रेज किया है कि सिटीज में तो बात हो रही है बट जो विलेजेस में है ये सिर्फ साउथ uh, का या मतलब इसका नहीं ये ऑलमोस्ट अगर इंडिया के मेजर पार्ट्स में अगर हम देखेंगे तो विलेजेस में कोई सिस्टम नहीं है उसको यूज uh, हो रहा है बट उसको कैसे मतलब हम रिसाइकल कर पाए इसका कोई सिस्टम नहीं है तो थोड़ा बहुत अवेयरनेस का जैसे जो मैम ने पूछा है कि क्या हम कर सकते हैं तो उसमें कहीं ना कहीं हमें डराना पड़ेगा लोगों को और एक इमोशनली कनेक्ट देना पड़ेगा कि जैसे जो हम यूज कर रहे हैं उसका तो क्या नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट हो सकता है हमारे ऊपर तो होगा ही बट हमारे आने वाले जनरेशन के ऊपर भी होगा और वो सिर्फ मतलब नॉर्मल एयर पोल्यूशन नहीं बट उससे मट्टी भी है वो भी पोल्यूट हो रही है आप जला रहे हो तो एयर पोल्यूशन तो हो ही रहा है तो तो थोड़ा सा कहीं ना कहीं मतलब सीधा ज्ञान बांटने से अच्छा इन जैसे नॉर्मल है कुछ अलग यूनिक हम कुछ अलग मतलब उसमें हम करें कुछ क्रिएटिव तरीके से उन्हें अगर अवेयर करने का आ, काम करें तो फिर वो मतलब एक कहीं ना कहीं बात बन सकती है I think we we are running out of time. We also want to uh, launch the report formally, and uh, I think the uh, we we will we'll be sharing a post conference post webinar summary. And uh, if the panelists are okay, maybe we can share their public profiles. And if some of the uh, participants have specific queries, they can reach out to them as well. Sure, and, sir. Sure. No. and agar uh, through us if there is anything or uh, we will be sharing another form and you can directly get in touch with us as well and uh, i think we kind of covered most of the questions there was one question by ishak which was about uh, i think if you shivani it's a question to you but if you want to take it very briefly on Uh, policy level i think you already covered this in a way that what can be done on policy level regarding air pollution in context of smaller cities because i think the policy level probably might not be uh, so yeah. specific only to smaller cities but any quick insight or... i i think uh, i mean this not cannot be a short answer uh, okay. i mean the government has to start or the policy makers have to first think of it as climate yeah. first we don't think of climate first in any of our actions and in any of the um, measures that we take matlab uh, i remember once uh, in kerala in some part of kerala what they did was they were educating women on the use of uh, menstrual hygiene all right and what they did was instead of introducing women to like they were they usually you'll see people moving from no menstrual hygiene to sanitary napkins or from cloths to sanitary napkins which also generates waste instead of that what they did in kerala was they moved them directly from no menstrual hygiene or cloth uh, cloth being used to menstrual cups directly so if you are pushing for change just push for like better change instead of going one level up one level up one level up because for them it's going to be change right so i think such kind of drastic measures need to be taken taken at some points especially in rural areas so for usha also i wanted to say that especially in rural areas if you are teaching somebody why just teach like a b c d teach a to z and then teach 1 to 100 what's the point of just showing them like one part of it so that's one thing yeah sure so i think uh, with that i would like to formally close the panel discussion and uh, i would like to thank our esteemed panelists and thank the agric team arundhati we also have nimisha who uh, was instrumental in the initial research for this uh, so thanks nimisha as well and the whole of nagrik team and 
with that i would invite arundhati to uh, formally launch the report and the report would be online on our website uh, and we would love to have your individual feedback as well once you've gone through the report and areas of improvement Thanks so much. Thanks again. Thanks, Ajay. Thanks, Shivani. Thanks, Dr. Rajiv. Uh, thanks, Ravi. Congratulations and... to you, Tarun, uh, for Thank launching you. the next report. I will go through it and give my feedbacks to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you for you all. Thank you, Arundhati. Thank you, Tarun. Thank you all. Thanks. Have a great, uh, great evening. And of yeah. course, we'll be in touch. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So not everyone. Uh, just in case anybody wants to get in touch, uh, the LinkedIn profile, the LinkedIn post that Nagrika shared has my LinkedIn profile. Uh, you can connect with me there. And if you have any questions, I am happy to answer. Otherwise, also, if you want to connect, I'm happy to connect. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to all.